take us mentally what you go through on a timeline from the point of leaving for the show, arriving at, at the showgrounds or the area, uh, checking into the hotel, preparing your dog, and the day of the show. So. We drove down into the city Sunday morning, dropped all of our gear off at the piers, and uh, checked out the venue, and took rumor inside the building, got our, you know, refreshed her memory as to what that place was like, and Lizzie and I did a little work with her in on the, on the carpet, and we were playing with her and running her around and getting her, getting her jacked up mentally and try to get the, get the energy and the, the mindset so when we get close to that ring that we could get a, you know, get a good performance out of her the next day. Our breed judging didn't start until three o'clock Monday afternoon. So we were, I think the benching, we needed to be in there by 10 o'clock in the morning. So we uh, took her over there, got her set up on the bench, and just kind of let her chill out. And you have you know, a lot of people in and out and whatnot. We're, we're trying to keep a low profile so, so that there wasn't a lot of media people coming up. We just wanted our dog to rest and stay focused. And then a couple of different times beforehand, we'd get her out and play with her and try to find a spot where we could go to get her a little exercise so we could keep her freed up physically and, and engaged mentally. Exercised her a couple of times and kind of waited close to, oh, I guess quarter after 2, 2.30 and, and uh, groomed her up and went over, to the, went over the, to the ring and there was, you know, even at that level, uh, there's a lot of excitement, you know, and you've got to you're not going to get very far. You have to win that breed. And there was 17 other German Shepherds in there and, and several very nice ones. So we knew we had a lot of stuff to get rolling right away in order to pull the first level off. So anyways, we, uh, that went really well. She, she showed super. There was a lot of different people from a lot of other breeds came to watch it. And people, a lot of folks came up afterwards and thought that she looked as good as ever they were really happy for us in fact even a couple of our competitors who we were definitely going to be worried about later on in the day said man she's looking awful nice you know <laughs> so that was really nice i mean the people in the sport are just fantastic and they've just supported us just it's just kind of been unbelievable the the sportsmanship and you know how most of these people that are handling dogs I mean they're 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 passionate about the animals they show and the sport in general and, and everybody pretty much supports one another win lose or draw you know with our group we were the last group on Monday night so showing at three o'clock in the afternoon and finally getting out of there by 4 30 we had to you know make arrangements and I shouldn't even say we had to make arrangements because the, the, the Kennel Club does a fantastic job of, of putting the things together to make it so exhibitor friendly that it, it just, uh, you know, we got on the bus and they took us over there and, and uh, we were able to get back off and get in on the bench and, uh, you know, start going through all of the uh, nervous tension and the anxiety as a handler that you try to talk yourself out of having even before we went into the group that night. I think that the dog feeds off the energy. So we, our routine with her was that like, I'd have Liz take her out of the crate. She's really attached to me. So I'd go hide from her and then I'd start call, I'll call her and, and make a few noises and make a big game out of her trying to find me. And then once she finds me, then I switch leads with her and I put the lead on her that we're going to show her on and I just try to keep myself like pretty jacked up and then that way that kind of that energy transfers down into that dog and then she winds up, you know, I mean she's, with all of the showing that we've done, she's managed to just really stay engaged and we try to make sure that win, lose or draw whenever we're in the ring that that's absolutely one of the most enjoyable times of her day. You know, I mean, we, we try to keep her happy and exercised and 
play different kinds of games with her to keep her mind stimulated, but it's, uh, except for the gar garden and some of those other big shows like that, uh, a lot of the normal all breed shows, it's the same routine every day. Well, when you're showing the breed and the group and best in show, you're showing that dog, if you're on a four day weekend, I mean, they may be going in the ring 12 times. So you've got to keep thinking of different things to keep that animal stimulated mentally while they're inside so you don't bore them to death. And German Shepherds are, you know, they're smart dogs and they're thinkers. So you've got to try to do what you can do to keep, keep one step ahead of them and, and keep them going. A lot of exercise, I think, is is key. You know, I mean, you got to, you know, good nutrition. You know, and a lot of exercise, and uh, you know that's the main thing. And you know, just uh, we play times where you know we've got quite a bit of acreage and stuff, and and we'll go to one person takes her out and you know do like restrained recalls and call her and keep her looking you know keep her looking up and looking for things on the outside of the ring so and then I wind up using you know food on the inside to keep that alert and just make a big game out of her catching catching bait and then like I'll I'll run down the road and whatnot and I'll have things that I that I throw and then I talk to her at the same time so she starts to anticipate certain things so she'll hold her ears up and and get get animated and stay animated so you can wind up having a lot of I, I like to see German Shepherds with a lot of enthusiasm only because I, I really think that it it, it it shows the spirit of the animal and the and like the work ethic so if they're just kind of going through the motions without a lot of uh, emotion in it themselves I, I wonder you know I mean is there anybody home upstairs you know so it's like the job of the handler to keep that animal looking like it's you know like it's alert and alive you know a German Shepherd's a is a like a working herding type breed and they should have you know they should have the look of intelligence and like, like they have some work ethic and energy you're asking me what's going through my head when I'm getting ready to go back in for best in show. I mean, this is something that you're going to find is just like so crazy. You're going to wonder what are you thinking of? But I decided to wear, if we won the group, I was going to wear a tuxedo that night, right? So last year we accepted those awards for Top Dog. 2015 when we were at the Perina Dogs and Review party and so uh, I had had a tuxedo that I wore there for that event and uh, you know everything was good so I decided I was going to wear that tux for the best in show lineup well something that I'll never do again I never tried that tuxedo on until an hour and a half before I was going to go in for best in show so I'm over at the hotel after we have her benched there and I'm putting this thing on and I'm like, Jesus, I must have lost a couple of pounds here. These pants are fitting a little loose. So I'm over there at the garden and there's no belt loops on the thing. So I can't even wind up cinching this baby up. So I'm over there at the dog show complaining to Liz. It's like, holy man, I'm not going to be able to run in this thing. It's my pants are going to wind up, you know, falling down. I won't be able to keep my shirt tucked in. So she scouted around and find a big old, got a big old safety pin from, actually it was from the gentleman's wife that owns the Irish Setter. So she gave that to me and I went back and Lizzie kind of cinched them up and oh, I felt pretty good. You know, I can run on these, everything will be good. And right shortly before I'm going in there, the back of the tuxedo started to tear with the pin in it. So it's like, oh my God, you know? So I had to take that thing apart. And so I was like unbelievably nervous and, and hyper anyway before I uh, wound up going in there. So then the next thing I've got to do is worry about how the hell I can keep these pants up <laughs> as I'm going around the ring. So I don't know, it was, it was like stressful, you know? But, Everything stayed together. I think my shirt only came, you know, came undone once when I was going around the backside of the ring and everything worked out. So that lineup was a 
awesome lineup. And I knew he was a sporting dog man. And I thought the Irish setter was looking beautiful. So I was thinking she had a heck of a good shot. And then I've got Pat Trotter benched next to me. And she was benched next to us during the day. And she was benched next to us before we went in there. And I'm thinking, and that is just an absolutely just lovely woman that's dedicated her whole life to the sport of purebred dogs. You know, very accomplished woman. And she's had just some of the most fantastic dogs, uh, you know, probably for over 50 years at that dog show. And I knew it's like, oh my Lord, you know, she, they, you know, it's my understanding that was her 11th group win. So I'm thinking, you know, and if she would have won, I mean, we would have not ever been able to be any happier for somebody. Cause I mean, I'm thinking to myself, my God, at 81 years old, and she's still able to show those dogs like that, do that. It's like, I mean, if that's not inspirational to, to some dog people, I mean, I can't hardly imagine what possibly could be. I was prepared to be hugging and congratulating Pat as well. So when he came out with that reserve, ribbon and gave it to the Irish setter. I thought, well, that's, <laughs> that's, that's one of them that's not going best in show, you know? Plus you had the poodle that looked fantastic, and all, you know, the, the, the terrier, and, and the, the Pekingese, and I mean, the boxer looked outstanding. I mean, and that, you know, I mean, they do such a wonderful job with that animal, you know? So it's like, oh Lord, you know? I mean, it, you know, that's like a tense moment, you know? Then I'm, uh, you know, wanting to get my bitch looking really, really alert at the end. And, and well, this is before he actually picked him. And then I thought I kind of timed that a little off because I, I threw that bait and I thought he was gonna be looking, if, you know, and it took him like an, it was, I screwed up because I should have waited like another 15 seconds, but she did, boy. She stood like a statue looking at that. So I was just like uh, super pleased about that. But, you know, when he came back out and awarded the, uh, kind of looked over and said to German Shepherd, you know, then it was like, you know, wow. You know, <laughs> couldn't, didn't know if I could even hardly believe it. Then they were asking us to say a few words afterwards and, I was just doing all I could do to just kind of keep it together emotionally, you know, because it was such an emotional roller coaster ride. And, you know, 35 years of handling dogs and breeding dogs and all the rest of this stuff. And that bitch has done such a, you know, so many amazing things for us that I was pretty confident in the beginning that she would have been capable of it, you know, and I'd, I'd talk to my you know, one of my best friends and mentors, Jim Moses, about her early on. And I said, Jim, I said, I, I've got this animal at home. I said, I think if you were still handling dogs, I think you could make, you know, a real star out of her. I mean, it might be one of those animals you would be able to win 100 best in shows. Uh, but I, I really never uh, dreamed we'd be able to pull it off ourselves. He's one of the owners of Rumors Sire. And that was another, you know, you know, outstanding dog with a really great temperament, best in show winning animal. So he was thrilled for us. I mean, he, you know, you know I mean, he could not have been more supportive of her and her whole campaign. There's a lot of new people that really want to get into this sport and they just don't know who to listen to because they've got people coming at them from several directions. I mean, does even somebody of your caliber that has done this this long and all those best in shows, I mean, do you still have someone that you look up to or ask questions oh, of? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I ask a lot of questions and the gentleman I just referred to, uh, Jim Moses, uh, he had the last German Shepherd that that the only other German Shepherd that won at the Westminster Kennel Club in 87 at Kobe Tucker Hills, Manhattan. And that was, uh, you know, so I've followed him around and I can remember as a 15 year old when I finally talked to my parents into letting me get my first purebred German Shepherd. You know, I can remember trucking on down to the bookstore and ordering a book that he co-authored. So when, uh, you know, when I finally wound up 
then I, after I got the dog, and then I went to work for the breeder in Barron, Wisconsin, it, and uh, did some work. And I didn't even realize there were dog shows at the time. And then uh, the, the gentleman, Larry Jerome, that I had worked for, he had a couple of dogs being campaigned by professional handlers. So I got to travel with those guys and, and condition the dogs and take to them so they could handle them and then realized that you could actually uh, probably make a living doing this. I mean, I was like 16 at the time when I started working for that guy. Uh, it was like, I mean, I think that was pretty much all it wrote. I was thinking, well, that's what I'm going to wind up doing, you know, because then you get to, you know, I get to actually make money off something that I wanted to be around dogs all the time. And, you know, I, I love to travel, so, I mean, I had to, like to, you know, all three things wrapped up into one. So, and uh, once I met Jim and started doing stuff, and he kept watching me, and he could realize that I had a real passion for it, want to do stuff. I mean, he's been helping me ever since. You know, and uh, the amount of knowledge that he has in the dog show business, I mean, it's just like unbelievable. And, and he knows so much about so many different breeds of dogs. It's when I was running the campaign with her, I mean. I'd be calling him, asking him questions nonstop. I was thinking for a while he might put a, you know, block my number from reaching him, you know, but it was, it was all good. And I've had another gentleman that just passed away this past year, Ron Gates from Des Moines, Iowa. I mean, he let me travel with him from the time I was in high school right on up till the time he retired. And he sold me his van, his crates, you know, and tried to get as many of his clients to use me as they could. So I've had a tremendous amount of help through the years. And uh, I think part of the responsibility that you have as a, as a dog person in this is to try to pass that stuff along to the young people and do as much as you can to bring them together and try to keep the, you know, try to keep growing the sport. And I think that's where we've really fallen short, you know, I think just economically it's more difficult now and you've got a lot of the real pillars of these breeds and people that really have the experience and the knowledge of, of what's going on they're 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 aging out and we haven't taken enough time to cultivate the young people coming in so you know I mean it teaches them responsibility and work ethic and you know we you know, just the compassion of having the animals, and and if you can get him, get him into the local kennel clubs, and get him into obedience, there's a lot of fantastic things they can do, which is a, a alternative to all the other things that they can wind up becoming involved in, which are not good. There's some negativity from some people, and they wind up talking about how it's it's all political, and it's you've got to know this person or that person, or you got to try to. You know, you know, like the only reason that person won is because he knew that judge and, you know, on and on and on. But if you really analyze how things go down, I mean, people that have a, a consistent record of being successful, it's because they, they have good dogs, they condition them properly, they present them well, and they do their homework, you know. It's a, it's a lot of work, and, and I've learned over the years, I mean, there's absolutely times where, where you know that when you won, maybe there was a dog in second that could have won, and then there's times where you think that you've been, you've been back there where you should have won, but the problem with some people is they think they should always win. You know, they don't, you know, they might have the dog that should have went third, it wins or it goes second and they're complaining because they're in second place when in reality they should have been in third place, you know, and it's because they don't take the time to really study the animals that they're, that they're working with and that they have and they really maybe don't know nearly as much as that they think they know, you know. I, I remember one of my old friends that was a, another mentor that we used to spend a lot of time with who's now passed away and he used to say something and I don't know if I can get this right but he, it was like he used to say about some people it's like they don't know enough to know that they don't know what they think they should know you know and there's just like a lot of truth to that so I mean there's like fantastic 
old dog books, you know, and videotapes, and, and just there, there's people around that really, really know dogs, and you've got to track those people down and, and, you know, spend time with them and try to, for the young people, you know, to, to try to go work for some of these professional handlers, and, and don't worry about trying to get in the ring with the dogs, just worry about working in the background and hanging around with them, and don't act like every time you turn around you need to get paid for something because in reality, a lot of times, I mean, you could almost be paying them just to be able to hang around with them because, I mean, it, it costs money to go to school, you know. And it, uh, I always say, like, a lot of the lessons that you learn as you go through this business, and, you know, if you, you always keep an open mind and realize that, you know, no matter how long you do this, I mean, you keep an open mind. I mean, you know, the janitor at the building may come up and say something to you that you can pick something up off and it makes you think, you know. That's when you start to realize, or not when you start to realize, but when you start to think that you've got a handle on all this stuff and you know everything, I mean, that's where you start realizing that, you know, you, you maybe don't. Well, I think, that, you know, you absolutely have to work at conditioning the dogs physically and mentally and yeah absolutely I mean you need to know those dogs inside and out I mean that's what I wound up doing and I would sit with those you know the the people that I had a lot of respect for I mean uh, Lizzie's my partner's father Liz's father Paul Johnson and he's been breeding German Shepherds since the late 50s and then another close friend of ours has probably judged at least 10 nationals and uh, you know just Every time you'd get a chance where you weren't running around working at those dog shows, I'd be going and sitting in a lawn chair next to those guys analyzing dogs and, and try to, you know, I would critique the dogs in front of them and then they would wind up giving me their opinions. And, you know, and I mean, it's just, uh, you know, I, I think at this point in time, we've probably finished over 400 German Shepherds and had like a lot of them. And I mean, the main thing is, do you want to know what you have on the end of the lead and compare that to the standard so that you you know the the virtues and the shortcomings of your dog so when you handle that animal the handler's job when you go in the ring if there's 15 dogs out there with you you've got to sit there watch those 15 dogs go in the ring realize which ones are going to be your competition realize their virtues and their shortcomings and you have to know the same thing on the dog that you have so that when it gets time for the, that judge to start making those evaluations, you need to try to figure out how you can sell your animal to that judge. Subtle little things to try to point those things out to that judge without, and you don't want to be obnoxious about it, you know? I mean, you, you need to do it so that it's in such a way that it, it may bring those things to attention without them even realizing that that's what's going on. You know, and that's just all in presentation. But the the thing that it is, it's it's not just present. It's not the presentation. You've got to know what it is on those animals. So you have to study those breeds. And I've just made pretty much a, a lifelong study out of you know, studying German Shepherds. But you know, I mean, if you're going to handle other breed, whatever breed of dog it is that you're handling, you need to you need to know that breed you know a good presentation you want it to be smooth you know you want those animals to be well socialized and in condition and trained i mean it's difficult for them to I mean, you could have the best dog there but i mean if it's if it's running sideways cranking into the lead and you can't really evaluate it i mean they're out there trying to look at those dogs in a, in a minute and a half or a two minute time frame. I mean, they don't have the luxury to sit there and just watch your dog all day long. I mean, you've got to be able to, to, in a few number of steps, try to get the best presentation that you can from it. So, you know, you've got to put on a little bit of a show without making it look like you're trying to, you I mean, you're trying to show your dog, you're not trying to show yourself. Some of these guys will wind up, you know, making it look like it's maybe like all about them or they, try to intimidate the judge or they do different things like that. I, I think a lot of times that stuff can kind of backfire on you. I mean, it works sometimes, you know, but I found over the years you're better off not trying to 
ram yourself down the judge's throat. You just you want to make a good presentation, and you know if there's certain things, you know, you know you might have to move a little bit somehow or another, and you know, you mix it up a little bit, and just try to get that dog a little more animated. Always be respectful. Take good care of your dogs. I mean, that's the absolute main thing. I mean, people watch, you know, and they see people that, uh, you know, leave their dogs crated too long, you know, so, you know, and then you can tell when dogs are, are happy and ones that aren't, and, you know, make sure your dogs are in condition, groomed, clean, and well cared for, and that goes a long ways, and people see you do that for year after year, they, you know, they, have respect for what you're doing, you know, and if they see that you're passionate about what you do and that you're really trying to breed solid animals instead of just winners at dog shows, you know, because my philosophy with that stuff is, I mean, you need to breed, if you have good, solid dogs that are, that are conformed to the standard and you breed for, I mean, and you have to have those kind of animals to use for breeding animals. So if you, concentrate on breeding animals that conform to that standard and you're looking for the next generation of what to breed well you'll get some of those animals that you take to the dog shows and then and then you you prove your product at the dog show you know and that's what the dog shows are supposed to be all about is, is uh, evaluating breeding stock you know i mean it's not something where you're just Breed, trying to breed a winner, you know, and I mean, it's about breeding the next generation. So you've got to, uh, that's what, you know, and it's just like there used to be more of a separation in German Shepherds between your AKC dogs that would go to all breed shows and the ones that would go to specialty shows. And then you have your European style dogs and your, you know, they're split between their working line dogs and their, and their show line dogs. and and truthfully, I mean, the dogs that are the best dogs, the best overall representatives that really conform true to that standard are respected by the people that participate in all of those venues, you know. Your working line people, I mean, you're not going to have a lot of these uh, show line dogs are not going to have the kind of work ethic that some of those you know that some of those working line police dogs would have but then if you had those kind of dogs you probably wouldn't be living with them in the house or going to the dog shows because they're like spinning cartwheels all day long because all they want to do is work 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 you know then that's fantastic when you're when you have like detection dogs and and you know service dogs that need to work that's what they're for you know and uh the the but so my point to that though is just dogs that can compete both at all breeds, you know, win groups at all breed shows, go to the national specialties and be competitive and be respected by the people in Europe and around the country, in a, you know, around the world. I mean, I've always tried to keep a really open mind on that and think, you know, I don't care if the dog's bred on Pluto, you know, I mean, if it's a good German Shepherd dog, I mean, and if we think that we could use it to expand the gene pool. I mean, what we need to do in this country with, with these uh, American show dogs and stuff like that is we've, we need to keep expanding the gene pool and try to keep bringing in people from other aspects of the sport, you know, with other, you know, that are, that are used to participating in other venues and try to bring that stuff together with solid dogs that can be appreciated by everybody. And that's what's gonna grow this entry and grow this sport in the past half a dozen years or so we've we've used a couple of those european dogs with with a lot of success this this uh past national specialty we had we had uh, actually uh litter made brothers that wound up going winner's dog and reserve winner's dog sired by an imported dog like with rumor she doesn't look all that much different than some of the really beautiful females that they have in germany in fact I wound up six months ago, I had some breeders in Germany that, that I send videotapes to some of our good dogs over here to them so they understand the types of dogs that were competing over here. Then it, it took a couple of years, but they wound up uh, calling me up and they said, well, I think we have one for you, you know? And I'm like, okay, okay, you know? And I wound up making a deal with them and when she, uh, uh, 
got off the airplane and we started looking at her. I mean, she's a gorgeous bitch, you know, and uh, she's just not that far apart in proportions and looks than, than what our better dogs are over here. So I know that you can take and you can utilize those animals. I mean, I just found a, another female that, that uh, Jim and Jerry Moses had bred that was sired by an imported dog. And I you know, went out and looked at her and brought her back here. And I mean, she's, a, you know, just a beautiful bitch. So, I mean, I know that that can be done and that's going to do nothing but strengthen the genetics in these animals, you know, and, and we need to do that for, for overall health reason and, and mental soundness. If you could go back and change one thing, what would you do? I would have probably tried that tuxedo on and maybe taken to the tailor shop and uh, had that thing altered a little bit. <laughs> that would be one of the things that I would have changed. I'll tell you the truth, I, you know, I, I can't really think, you know, I mean, there is a little things that I would tweak out different with my handling, you know, in there because I thought, you know, sometimes maybe the timing was a little off here and there, but I mean, just the way that it worked out, I mean, I'm like a, like a nutcase when it comes to some of that stuff because like at some of those dog shows and those nationals, I mean, I lay awake at night and I try to, I try to think the whole thing through in my head how that's going to go down, you know, and I, I try to think to myself what I'm going to wind up doing, how that animal's going to react, and if she reacts a certain way, then what am I going to wind up doing to try to get out of her what I, what I want? But I mean, you know, just all in all, it just worked out beautifully. I mean, I couldn't hardly ask for anything different. I mean, I'm just so thankful, you know, that she was on it, you know, and, and she was feeling good and performed as well as she had. And after we won that, and then uh, the Westminster people took us around to the different interviews. It was like, I was wondering, geez, how is she going to handle all that stuff? And I mean, she just blew me away as to how I mean, all the stuff that went on for like two solid days and all the reporters and camera people. I mean, I was putting her on sit stays and down stays up on the Empire State Building and, and in the World One Trade Center building. And I mean, I'd put her on a down stay right next to the window with a thousand feet down below. And, and I was moving behind all those photographers and she just, she's, stuck right with the program. I mean, she just made us just as proud as, you know, I can't tell you how excited we were that everything went as well as it did. And the, the people from the Kennel Club were just fantastic, you know. I mean, they picked us up, took care of us, and, you know, showed us around. So it, it was just a fantastic experience. I'm Kent Boyles and uh, our German Shepherd. Locking House, rumor has it, V. Kenlin from Kenlin German Shepherds just won the 141st annual Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show, and you are watching Our Dogs Magazine.